Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of our Flinch Squad Circuit. We are in the Moon Series right now. We're kicking into week 8 this week. If you've missed any of the previous weeks and matches and you'd like to check them out, you can go back up here and check out the games that we've had from our players so far. They've been incredible games up to now. As I say, we reached the halfway point last week, so we're going into the back end stages of the tournament now. We've got some absolutely incredible matches that we're featuring for you this week and I cannot wait to get in into them. So without further ado, let's jump over to the pairings for week 8. So this week we have Bebum versus Amagi, Xenophist Ace versus Purple, Pinko versus Hectic, Shade versus Alex, Pogamati versus Yorine, Worm's Eye versus Stu, Luigi versus Krim, and Johnny versus Will. So we have some absolutely incredible matches for us coming up in this week's episode. I hope you enjoy all of the games that we have for you this week. But before we get into anything, as always, if you do enjoy this sort of content, make sure to drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of these episodes when they drop, as well as our daily battle series, our guide series, our restreams, and everything to do with Pokemon on the channel. And just to let you know that the Ultra series will be starting within the next three weeks. So signups will be going up very soon, and all the promotion around the Ultra series and how to get involved in that will be going up. So keep an eye on the channel for that information when it does drop. But without further ado, let's not hang around anymore and get into today's first game, which is going to be Hectic versus Pinko VGC. So as you can see, Hectic is going to be on the top of your screen, Pinko on the bottom. We are going to see Pinko lead out with this Tapulele and Cortana. Hectic lead out with Xerneas and Smeagol, that infamous lead that we've seen do so well in this format. We are seeing the Psychic Train activate. Going to prevent a fake out here as Xerneas just protects turn one with a Moonblast going into that Smeagol and taking it down to a Sash. Is the Cortana going to doubling into it and takes down the Smeagol turn one. Big play here for Pinko and the Beast Boost coming out for the Cortana. Serena now going to hit the for Preston and the Moonblast again coming out into that slot is the double up into that slot once again going to happen it is the Serena going down and Pinko taking a big lead here for Pokemon to two now but the Geomancy left alone this turn and going to go for that Geomancy here Preston going to pull this out and try and claw this game back now he is two Pokemon down to four at the moment so going to be a bit of an uphill struggle but if you can do it with anything it's going to be that Xerneas Lunala hitting the field from as we see a Dazzling Gleam fired out from this Xerneas taking decent damage on both a Moonblast now into this Lunala knockoff doubling into that slot taking that Lunala down reducing Preston down to just one Pokemon but like I say if you're going to do it with anything it is going to be that Xerneas we're going to see the Cartana now switch out Tornadus come in Dazzling Gleam come out to take that Tornadus down to its Focus Sash the Tapu Lele goes down to that Dazzling Gleam with Kyogre now hitting the field going to activate this Rain and bring it out and be super powerful under this Tailwind Kyogre just going to protect here as we see a Tailwind set up from this tornado setting the scene for later in this game is a dazzling game coming out again from this zone is going to knock out that tornado after it goes down to that focus sash the previous turn cortana now hitting the field both these pokemon going to be able to threaten this zone is quite heavily smart strike into it does survive dazzling gleam coming out takes down the cortana and the kyogre left alone can it do this it is the waterium z the hydro vortex coming out from Pinko's Kyogre now and it is going to be firing into this Geomancy Xerneas. Is it going to be enough to take it down with those boosts? It is enough to take it down and Pinko stealing game one. Big game here for Pinko and going straight into game two. Pinko going to lead out this time with a bit of a different lead with the Incineroar Xerneas and the Incineroar and Stack Attack are coming out for Preston. We're going to see Timidate cycling all around from the Incineroars on the opposite sides of the field and we are going into turn one. We're going to see the Incineroar on Preston's side switch out Serena come in going to try and get around that fake out potential here from the incineral on pinko's side but no fake out coming just a u-turn coming out he's not falling for that trap repositioning himself and getting the kyogre onto the field with that drizzle it's going to threaten that stack attacker going into this next turn but a trick room now set up and everything on pinko's side of the field very threatened here the zonia is switching out tornado is going to hit the field now as we see the kyogre just protect if a rock slide comes out it's not looking good and that's what's happening from the stack attacker firing a rock slide out taking this tornado down to about half health for the power whip now into that Kyogre into the protect Kyogre now going to switch out into Incineroar get that intimidate again onto the stack attacker and now putting that Serena onto minus one rock
Rock Slide coming out again. It does avoid the Tornadoes though, and we are going to see a Power Whip into that Incineroar, but not do very much damage on minus one and resisted with a Hurricane now. Going to pick up big damage onto the Serena just Activating a berry, not knocking it out though. So it's still alright going into this next turn. It does switch out. Incineroar gonna hit the field once again for Preston. Gonna get that intimidate on to the Incineroar here. We are gonna see the tornado switch out on Pinko's side. Kyogre hit the field. Rock slide coming out and pick up some nice damage onto both Pokemon on Pinko's side of the field. U-turn coming back out again from this Incineroar. Gonna reposition. Try and stall out these tick Trick Room turns as Xerneas hits the field now. We are going to see going into the final turn of Trick Room this Lunala switch in now for the Stack Attacker. Protect coming out from this Xerneas as the Faker comes out from the Incineroar just to prevent that Kyogre doing anything this turn as the Dimensions turn back to normal. Geomancy coming out from this Xerneas now on Pinko's side of the field. Going to boost itself up and get itself set up for later in this game. And we are going to see those boosts take effect and a Psych Up come out from Preston's Lunala. Going to Copy all of those Geomancy boosts. A uh, water spell coming out. Not going to be enough to pick up the Incineroar out of the rain. And just proc that Aguave Berry with a roll coming out. Getting rid of the Xerneas. A huge play here for Preston. As he now has that Geomancy boosted Lunala on his side of the field. And it's going to be in a really nice position to start doing a lot of damage. And make it very difficult for Preston to come back from. We are going to see the Moon Guys beam into that Incineroar. Pick up the knockout there. Water spell coming out. It does pick up the knockout on the opposing Incineroar. Do a nice bit of chip damage to the this Lunala but in a brilliant situation here Preston after that psych up and roll combination the tornado is hitting the field for Pinko he does get the tailwind up now he needs to try and get this Kyogre out to get the rain back up but is he going to have the chance we are going to see the Lunala activate its Z move it is into the Kyogre and it is enough to pick up the KO and it looks like Preston is going to be able to tie this one up Rock Slide coming into the Tornadoes and Xerneas the only thing left on Pinko's side of the field Beast Boost coming out now activating that defense boost for the stack attacker and now the Xerneas comes out and it doesn't look too good as we see the forfeit so the game tied up going into game three here gonna hot up going into this third one as we see Pinko lead out with the Tapalele and Xerneas and Preston lead out with the Incineroar Xerneas so we are going to see the Psychic Train really help Pinko out here because of that fake out not being active with the Psychic Train up we are going to just see Xerneas switch straight out though for this Tornadus now Xerneas on the opposite side of the field just protect as we see a side shock into that slot and the Incineroar go for a U-turn into the Tapulele. Get some nice damage off and allows Preston to reposition his board here with Stack Attacker coming in now. Which does threaten both things on Pinko's side of the field. We are going to see the Tapulele switch out. Cortana hit the field now as a Hurricane comes out into the Stack Attacker. Getting some chip damage onto it. Picking up the Confusion as well which is very huge there. As we see the Geomancy now procking on this. Xerneas is going to boost its special attack, special defense and speed by two two stages and become a huge threat for Pinko's side of the field. Confusion now on the stack attacker but hits through it and goes for that Gyro doing some nice damage into that Cortana. We do see the Tailwind now set up from Pinko's Tornadoes. It's Doubling the speed on his side of the field with a Dazzling Gleam coming out, taking the Cartana down to 10 HP. The Tornadus down to its Sash. Smart Strike coming out into that Xerneas. And we do see the Confusion, but breaking through and picking up the Knockout onto that Cartana with the Stack Attacker on Preston's side of the field. Now getting that defensive boost. And Preston in a really nice position going into these next few turns. Still got to be a bit careful with this Tailwind up um, on his Xerneas' side of the field. We do see a Rain Dance now set up from this Tornadus, getting that Rain up for the prolonged turns here as we see a Focus blast from the Lele into the stack attacker it does hit takes down the stack attacker big turn there as we see the Incineroar now hit the field once again for Preston he's still got this boosted Xerneas just needs to see out these trick room turns but with that Tapu Lele locked in to potentially focus blast here doesn't really have too much to worry about we're going to see another focus blast it does connect this time into that Incineroar doing some nice damage but the Dazzling Gleam going to come out now going to be able to pick up the knockout onto that Tapu Lele and do some nice chip damage to the Xerneas on Pinko's side of the field. We do see the tornado re-enter. Hurricane not quite enough to pick up the knockout. Dazzling Gleam here. Going to be able to clear the field and Preston going to be able to take game one. Set one from Pinko. So very good. And now we are going into our next set which is Alex versus Shade. Alex on the top of your screen. Shade on the bottom of your screen. Going to see the stack attacker Incineroar come out for Alex and the Togolea and Togekiss come out for Shade. Going to see 
Intimidate cycle there. Stack attacker gonna be in a nice position to try and get this trick room up if it so goes for it. Charm coming out though from the toga case gonna be revealed. And reducing that attack power on the Incineroar by two stages. We do see the Trick Room set up from the Stack Attacker. Togekiss going to switch out. Incineroar now hit the field. Get another Intimidate onto that Incineroar and reduce the attack on the Stack Attacker by one. Rock Slide now coming out. Going to do some nice damage to the Incineroar and reveal a Life Orb there as we see a knockoff into the Sogaleo from the Incineroar. But the Trick Room just revealed. Reversed by this Sogaleo now. Incineroar going to switch out. Groudon going to hit the field once again bring the sun with it and start threatening the Sogaleo and Incineroar on Shades of the Field with the Xerneas switching in as well, the double switch there as we see a Z steel move here from Shade as he is proccing that on the Sogaleo and it is into the Xerneas, what a what a turn here for Shade as he is picking up the big knockout on the Xerneas here and we do see the Xerneas go down and the U-turn now come out from Shade's Incineroar into the ground. I'm going to reposition himself with the type of Finney coming onto the field gonna activate that misty terrain and no trick room now as the stack attacker comes back out onto the field not in a great position so we're gonna reposition itself with the threat of Groudon in front of it we are gonna see the toggle kiss switch in for that slot as the incineroar switches right in for that stack attacker to cycle intimidate again but not really affecting these two special attackers on this side of the field. Nature's Madness coming out into the Groudon as the Groudon on Alex's side goes for a sword stance. We are going to see a protect now from this Groudon as the Incineroar uh, has access to that fake out. Not going to see it though. Nature's Madness into that slot as we do see a Tailwind set up from this Togekiss. Really doing and showing its support options here as we see a Flare Blitz into it from the Incineroar in the sun. Taking big damage but we see a Heal Pulse now from the Tapu Fini into this Togekiss and a Charm coming out. Going to get rid of that Sword Stance boost from the Groudon. Precipice Blades coming out from the Groudon. Going to hit into that Tapu Fini. Do some decent damage with a Flare Blitz following up from the Incineroar. Just going to take that Fini down. Not enough to proc a potential berry there, but enough to proc the potential berry on the Incineroar. And I do eat my words. It is enough to proc the berry there. The Wiki Berry activating on that Tapu Fini. It is now going to switch out. Incineroar going to hit the field once again for Shade. Going to cycle this Intimidate once more onto this ground and take it down to minus one as well as that incineral we're gonna see the stack attacker now hit the field with another charm coming out and this time into the ground on once again reducing that attack down even further with a precipice blades coming out from this ground on now you've got to think on minus three it's not gonna be doing very much damage into this incineral and incineral is gonna be probably able to take this not quite though with the health that it was on and a critical hit there making sure that the tectonic wage was not wasted so so are gonna enter the field once again Gonna see a superpower this time into that stack attack. I just take it down, reduce that attack and defense stat here with another charm coming out into this Groudon and reducing its attack once again. Precipice Blades coming out. It'll be interesting to see how much this does to the Sogaleo, and it does nothing even after that minus one defense drop on the Sogaleo. We do see the Incineroar now hit the field for Alex. He has got access to fake out going into this turn. Sogaleo going to retreat now. Tapu Fini going to come in and preserve that Sogaleo for later in the game as we see the fake out into the Togekiss going to prevent any sort of speed control here as we see another sword stance from this Groudon boosting its attack up again after those charm drops. We're going to see an Aegis Madness into the Groudon here. Precipice Blades coming out. It does miss the Tapu Fini here which is a bit unfortunate and another Flare Blitz coming out from the Incineroar but into that Tapu Fini. Just trying to get rid of it here as we do see Groudon protect this next turn with the Tailwind active on Shade side of the field. Nature's Madness now coming into the Incineroar taking it down to just below 50% health as a flare blitz now firing into this Togekiss once again but still not enough to take it down this Togekiss and Tapu Fini combination working so well here for Shade as a heal pulse comes out and an air slash now into the Groudon does take the knockout taking the Groudon down and Incineroar left by itself nothing really Alex can do and Shade taking game one so we will go into game two now again Alex on the top of your screen leading off with the Smeagol Xerneas here as we see Shade lead off with the Togekiss and Sogaleo we do see the Fairy Aura proc and now going into turn one Xerneas going to switch straight out and Sinor going to hit the field now. Get that Intimidate, not going to affect the Sogaleo with that full metal body ability. Togekiss switching out for Shade as Tapu Fini hits the field. Going to try and just get that Misty Terrain up to prevent any sleep problems from that Smeagol as it does go for a lovely case and a Trick Room now set up from this Sogaleo trying to just counteract any potential. Trick Room from Alex's side of the field. Smeagol going to switch out and Groudon going to come in. 
Groudon gonna enjoy this trick room more than most things on Shade's side of the field. He does switch out and Incineroar hit the field once again. Get this Intimidate onto the Incineroar and the Groudon on Alex's side of the field. Nature's Madness coming into that Groudon slot. Take it down to about 50% health as we see a roll from the Incineroar. Bring it out the Incineroar and bring onto the field this Togekiss once again. We are gonna see the type of Finny switch out and the Incineroar come back onto the field. It's gonna cycle another Intimidate onto both these Pokemon. Groudon just protecting this turn as we see knock off from the Incineroar into that Incineroar slot on Shade's side, knocking off that Aya Papa Berry. The Chomp coming out into the Groudon, but going to be blocked by that Protect. Now, next turn, Xerneas coming in for Groudon. Going to activate, and there's the Flare Blitz. Is it into that? It is into the Xerneas slot, and does nice damage there. We're going to see another Flare Blitz come into this Togekiss, but minus two, not going to be quite as effective as a Chomp comes into that slot from the Togekiss, reducing that Incineroar's attack stat down even further. Now, Smeagol entering the field once again. Togekiss going to switch out. Sogaleo going to come in to try and keep that Xerneas under check. We are going to see Flare Blitz this time into that Protect and the Dimensions turn back to normal with the Mystic Terrain disappearing. Shade making sure that he has that type of Finny in the back to bring in again to alleviate any lovely Kiss damage and we do see that straight away here. Tapu Finny coming back straight onto the field to avoid any lovely kiss damage. But the Smeagol this turn going for a follow me. A Geomancy now coming out from this Xerneas. The Sogale you've got to think is just going to attack into that Smeagol. But it could also set the Trick Room up here to turn the tide on this Geomancy. But we are just going to see a Sunsteel Strike. It is going to be into that Smeagol here and do a decent damage. But after the Moody Boost not doing quite as much as you would normally expect it to. We are going to go on to the next turn, the Spiky Shield coming out from the Smeagol here as a Moonblast comes out into this Tapu Fini. Not quite enough to pick up the knockout, the Wikiberry activating and getting nice health back with this light screen being set up from Shade from the Tapu Fini, bolstering those defenses on the special side even further. Trick Room now set up from the Sogaleo and putting themselves in a super nice position going forward. You're going to see the Tapu Fini now switch out for the Incineroar. It is going to come back in, have that Intimidate support, but against these special attackers, not going to be so useful as Smeagol to switch out and grab on hit the field now for Alex as he is trying to carve out this win and make sure that he is protecting this Xerneas as best as he can. Superpower coming out now from this Sogalea into the Groudon. Going to do some nice damage and probably put it in range for the Incineroar to pick up the knockout the next turn. Incineroar now coming back in for Alex. He is switching things up. It is a revolving door of Pokemon. Xerneas going for the double protect but not going to get it. Flare Blitz into the Xerneas slot. Going to just do some nice chip damage there as a Sunsteel Strike this time. Coming out from the Sogaleo. It is minus one, but it should be doing enough to pick up the Xerneas, and he does get rid of that big threat. Groudon now coming onto the field once again, and is threatening that Incineroar and the Sogaleo. We do see the Incineroar switch out. Togekiss hit the field as Sogaleo just protects to avoid any damage here. Fake out coming out into the Togekiss, and a Sword Stance coming out from the Groudon. Now going to boost that attack stat by two stages. We are going to see the Sogaleo switch out, retreat the Tapu Fini, come back onto the field. Get that Misty Terrain up once again to protect against status conditions as we see a follow me now from this Togekiss we are going to see a knockoff into that slot and do we see the Z move no just a precipice blade not wanting to risk it it should take down this Tapu Fini minus two does take it down Light screen wears off and the dimensions turn back to normal. So we see the Sogaleo now hit the field. We are going to see the Incineroar switch out. The Smeagol come back onto the field for Alex as a follow me comes out from this Togekiss once again. It's a Sunsteel Strike this time into the Groudon. It should be enough to pick up the knockout here. And it is enough to pick up the knockout, taking down the Groudon and removing that big threat. And Shade really now in a position to close this one up with just Incineroar and Smeagol left on the field. Can't really underestimate these two, but he does feel like he has enough in the tank now to kind of close this one out. We are going to see the Togekiss just switch out for Incineroar now and with this Misty Terrain up on the field this Meagle is not half as threatening as it would be without it. So we see the Follow Me coming out. We are going to see the Z move now come out from the Sogaleo. It is going to fire it into probably that Smeagol slot after the Follow Me. And because of that, follow me, it is into the Smeagol, picking up the knockout there, just leaving Incineroar as the only Pokemon left on Alex's side of the field. We're going to see a Flare Blitz now fired off into that Incineroar slot, but not going to be doing very much as the Incineroar on Alex's side of the field going to be prone to a Fake Out and a Super Power now for Shade to lock this one up. So really well played by both players and Shade taking another victory in this circuit. So really good game for both of those players there.
So we will go into our last match that we'll be featuring today, and it's going to be Luigi versus Krim. Krim going to be on the top of your screen as Violet and Luigi on the bottom. Luigi going to lead off with Amoongus and the Veltal, and Krim going to lead off with the Kyogre and Tepococo here. We're going to see the Dark Aura activate, Drizzle activate after that, so we know the speed tier is a little bit going into this first turn. Kyogre going to switch straight out. Serena going to hit the field now as we see a Rage Powder from this Amoongus and pull everything in, and that Volt Switch as well. From the type of Coco, it's just going to get itself repositioned, but protecting that Eveltal all the time. We're going to see a Snarl come out from this Eveltal, and it does reduce the special attack damage on both the Dustman, Necrozma, and the Serena, but a weakness policy activating, which is ideal on this Necrozma. We're going to see another Rage Powder here come out from this Amoongus. We're going to see a Foul Play now into the Necrozma, easily picked up on plus two from this Eveltal. The knockoff coming out into that slot and taking down the Assault Vest. Kyogre now entering the field one again for Krim as we see just protect this turn we are going to see an Oblivion Wing come out from this Eveltal into that Serena it's going to do some nice damage here recover some of that health that it's lost already and a knockoff come out into this Amoongus take away that Cobra Berry as a Grass Knot into the Kyogre here we are going to see another Snarl Kyogre actually avoids that's a huge turn here for Krim and the Ice Beam coming out from the Kyogre going to be able to pick up near knockout onto this Amoongus but it is a double into that slot from the Serena and going to pick up the knockout there so if Finney now going to come out onto the field for Luigi as we see the Misty Train override the Electric Train, but that is not going to last long as the Tapu Koko now switches straight in to get its Electric Train right back. In fact, we're going to see a Snarl come out from this Eveltal. Once again, it is going to hit the Kyogre this turn with a Thunder coming out now. Boosted in this Electric Train, going to be Doom decent damage to this Tapu Fini and it does pick up the Paralysis and fully Paralysis this turn on the Tapu Fini, that's huge do you see the Kyogre now switch out Serena going to hit the field once again Thunder coming out into the Eveltal but does miss and a Snarl coming out from this Eveltal just keeping this pressure up as a Heal Pulse comes out into the Eveltal but not going to be doing anything as the Eveltal has lost no health, we're going to see a Volt Switch now and a Feint into this Tapu Fini but not quite enough after these Snarls to pick up the Knockout there, Tapu Koko going to readjust, we're going to see the Kyogre hit the field once again this rain activate and come back into play so we're going to see an oblivion wing now into this arena it is enough to pick up the knockout now Ivelto going back up to full health as a light screen going to be thrown up from this Tapu Fini on Luigi's side of the field. We're going to see the Tapu Koko come back onto the field and the Eveltal switch out now for Incineroar and it is it going to take it is going to take a big water spout potentially this turn but we are going to see a thunder from this Tapu Koko. It is going to be into the Incineroar. We do see a thunder doubling up into that slot not into the Tapu Fini so oh it is paralyzed though but leaving it alone this turn we do see a fake out into that Kyogre. We do see the thunder into the Tapu Fini. It does pick up the knockout there and the Kyogre Kyogre just going to flinch this turn. The electric terrain does disappear as Eveltal hits the field once again. It does not have its assault vest though, so it feels very vulnerable here as another thunder comes out into this Eveltal. Not quite enough to pick up the knockout as a snarl comes out from this Eveltal. Just reducing the special attack damage on the Kyogre and the Tapu Koko once again. But we are going to see a Z move now from Krim's Kyogre. It is going to be firing off this big Hydro Vortex. Which slot is it into? We're going to have to see it. Is the Eveltal, is it going to be enough on minus one to pick up the knockout? it's not but it does put it very close in range to going down to another thunder this following turn from this type of coco we know with it being a salt vest it is not going to be able to withstand or protect this turn as we do see a thunder into that slot pick up the knockout water spout into the incineroar not quite enough to pick up the knockout the snarl saving this incineroar here it does proc the figgy berry with a flare blitz coming back out into this type of coco it does pick up the knockout this one's going to be very close as the recall is there the light screen ends and the rain does stop a water spout coming out into the incineral it is not enough as a u-turn now coming out from the incineral going to further reduce that water spout water spout once again and it does survive can the incineral pick up the knockout here flare blitz into the kyogre it is not enough and just hangs on and then goes down to the recoil damage kyogre and krim taking game one what a way to finish there as we go into game two Luigi going to lead off in game two with this Eveltal and Tapu Fini and Krim going to lead off with the Dismin Necrozma and Tapu Koko here. We do see the Dark Aura activate and then the Misty Terrain overwrite the Electric Terrain from the Tapu Koko. Eveltal going to switch out turn one and Amoongus hit the field for Luigi as we see a Volt Switch into that slot. Just going to reposition here as we see the Incineroar now hit the field for Krim. We are going to see that Intimidate onto both these special attackers. Not going to be too useful here as a light screen set up from Luigi's side of the field. We're going to see the Trick Room now from this Dustman Necrozma setup put itself in a really nice position going forward in this match.
match. Clear smoke coming out into the Incineroar now. We are going to see a U-turn into this Amoongus. Do a little bit more chip damage from this Incineroar. Going to get the Tapu Koko back in. Get its Electric Terrain up, set up onto the field. As we see the Dust Moon across my goal for this Photon, guys. That's going to be into that Amoongus. And pick up a big knockout here. Amoongus going to be removed from the field. as a Nature's Madness now coming out from this Tapu Fini into the Dust Moon across my as Evaltol hits the field for a Luigi. Dustman and Crosma are going to switch out and Incineroar come in. It is going to get that Intimidate onto the Uvel. So you've got to think it will be Sucker Punching or going for a Dog type attack here. We are going to see Nature's Madness into the Tapu Koko here. Take it down to half health as a Volt Switch coming out from the Tapu Koko into the Uvel. Going to be a foul play into that Incineroar from the Uvel slot as well. I'm going to see the Kyogre come in for that Tapu Koko now. Get the Rain up and put itself in a really nice position as we see a Fake out into the Tapu Fini. We are going to see the Z move just gone straight forward pulling the trigger there from Krim and you've got to imagine this will be into that Evelto slot and doing a lot of damage it already taken chip damage from this Volt Switch but it is enough to take it it stands it quite well actually with that assault vest and fires off a snarl reducing this special attack even more as a U-turn comes out from the Incineroar, just chipping that Evelto further down and Tapu Koko now re-entering the field. There's another Nature's Madness coming out from the Tapu Fini into this Kyogre, taking it below 50% health. Now in the next turn we're going to see a Thunder from the Kyogre into the Evelto, going to be enough to pick up the knockout there. The light screen does wear off, the dimensions turn back to normal and Luigi bringing in this Xerneas now and in a nice position to try and get this Geomancy up. We're going to see a light screen from Crim's Tapu Koko as the Geomancy is set up from the Xerneas right now. Going to boost that special attack, special defense, and speed, proccing that one turn boosting ability with the power herb here and beating itself in a super nice position going to these next turns. We're going to see a Thunder come out from the Kyogre. Nature's Madness come out into that Kyogre. Just take it down a bit further and put it in range for this Xerneas to do all of the work now. Going to see a Dazzling Gleam pick up the knockout on Kyogre and Tapu Koko and the light screen set up once again from Luigi's Tapu Fini. But you've got to remember this Dustman and Necrozma is in the back and it is the one thing that really threatens this Xerneas on Luigi's side of the field more than anything. So can he get the Trick Room set up? That is the big question. We're going to see the Xerneas just protect here as we see the Incineral go for a fake out into the Tapu Fini slot predicting that protect on the Xerneas and the Trick Room now set up from this Dustman and Necrozma putting itself in an amazing position going into this next turn. Flare Blitz coming out into the Xerneas doing enough damage there and a Sunsteel Strike going to be doubling up into the Xerneas slot and it looks like Krim is going to be able to seal this one up steal this game from Luigi who has been on an absolutely incredible streak so far in this tournament and we do see the forfeit and Krim come out victorious so we've not got so many results going into the end of this week we featured a few of the matches but just to cover the results that we've had and we will catch up with these results as they come in some of the players just needed a bit of an extension going into the following weeks because of other things outside of this tournament which is totally understandable so like I say what we will do is catch up on these results as and when they do come in in future episodes but we can see the results that we've had here in game one we had Pinker one and Hectic two so Preston taking a big win in that first game we featured today then we had Shade two and Alex nil so Shade pulling away even further at the top of the league here we had Worms Eye nil and Stu winning that one 2-0 unfortunately we didn't have the replay codes for that match and then we finished off with Luigi nil and Krim pulling out a big win there. They are the results for week eight. So we can go into the leaderboard and just have a quick look at how things are standing after these results going into the last week of the tournament. So as you can see, Stu and Shade are tying up top. I cannot wait for these two to play each other. It's going to be very soon and a very exciting match to look forward to. We've got Luigi down in third, Will in fourth, Hectic in fifth, Worms Eye in sixth, Pinko in seventh, Krim in eighth, Johnny in ninth, and Maggi in 10th, Alex in 11th, Pogamati in 12th, Yorine in 13th, Xenophis Dace in 14th, 15th we've got Purple and then 16th we have Bebum. So they are the results going into the end of week 8. It's been extremely exciting and what a bunch of great games you've had to feature this week. So a massive shout out to all the players. Thank you so much for 
providing the codes for us and putting on such a good show. I hope you all have enjoyed this week and even though we haven't featured many matches, we haven't got a lot of the results from this week. As I say, we'll be catching up with them in future week episodes when we get to them and the results are in. So I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. Everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure to drop a like, leave a comment and all of that jazz down below and I will see you for the next one very soon. So until then, take care of yourselves and bye-bye.